Okay. I actually got this article a few days ago, but I had to double and triple check to make sure that it was legit uh, because of everything that's going on out there in regards to fake news and satire websites and stuff like that so as to make it that much more difficult for people to show what's actually happening in the world because a lot of people will just tag it on. That's probably just fake news. But check this out. The Vatican rocked. Police raid drug fueled gay orgy at Cardinal's apartment. Now keep in mind that... A cardinal is only second to the Pope. The order of promotion, if you will, which is totally unbiblical in the Roman Catholic Church, is you start off as a priest, then you go to become a bishop, then an archbishop, then a cardinal, and then if you are elected a Pope, and that's it. It's about as, well, you, there's a monk in there, you know, in, you know, down by the priest and stuff like that with the monasteries, which is also a strange thing if you think about it, because. When a Roman Catholic becomes aware of Jesus Christ as Savior and wants to share his faith with as many as he possibly can, and he's not someone that they would consider good for the priesthood, they tell him to become a monk, join a monastery, and shut up. The exact opposite of the Great Commission of Jesus Christ. But that's just, that's a whole other video. But check this out with this video. Oh, and by the way, this picture of uh, the Pope acting like he's all shamed and, you know, and it's really bothering him what's happening. No, that's just a political picture. That's all it is. He has been pushing homosexuality since he was a cardinal in Argentina. As a matter of fact, if it wasn't for him, they wouldn't have homosexual unions legalized in Argentina before he became pope. And so this is all just to keep his moral, quote-unquote, uh, appearance up there where they need it to be. But check it out. It says the Vatican police have raided a cardinal's apartment where a drug-fueled homosexual orgy was taking place. Police entered an apartment at the former palace of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, or Holy Office, last month, not far from Vatican City. Now, the Holy Office is a new name for the Office of Inquisition. John Paul II he changed the name of the Office of Inquisition to the Holy Office back during his pontificate. And I did a, a newsletter and a radio broadcast about that many years ago. But the, it's, it goes on to say that the occupant of the apartment is alleged to be a priest who serves as a secretary to Cardinal Francesco Coco Palmerio of the Pontifical Council for Legislative Texts and a personal advisor to the Pope. All right, and there's the guy right there. And so going on, it says the allegations of the orgy were first published at that foreign newspaper there. And then it says, according to the paper, neighbors became suspicious before complaining about irregular behavior of those coming and going at the apartment. When police showed up at the apartment, they reportedly found drugs and a group of men engaged in sexual activity. The priest was then arrested and taken for questioning. So it just goes on from there. But it's ridiculous how many people actually think that anything's going to change with the Vatican. I did a newsletter years ago. If you, if you go to the news section here and you go to the Truth Provided newsletter, go down to the old format, and if you just type in you know, control F or F3 on this page and start typing in the word homosexual, it'll bring you to uh, February 29, 2004 newsletter about Rome's homosexual agenda. I even did a couple of videos on there, as you can see here. Uh, but this is what's crazy. And a lot of people ignore this, especially the Roman Catholics. This is why I have such a burden for them and why they can't see that their own children are being attacked and they stay in a church that does openly do this is, is beyond me. But check it out. Back in 2000, uh, they had a pedophile concert in a Catholic church. The Man-Boy Love Association was involved in everything. And I, and I, I go into detail about that and so many other things in this, uh, uh, in this article, this newsletter I did years ago. Plus, during John Paul II's pontificate, he vetoed the zero-tolerance policy of the Vatican when the molestation scandal was getting so out of hand back then. Well, the cardinals and the bishops decided, okay, zero tolerance. If you guys get caught, that's it. You're out of here. But the Pope vetoed that. Why? Well, it's obvious. I did the newsletter on that many years ago as well. Had he not vetoed it, they wouldn't have any priests. Because as we also know, recently it was let out by an Italian magazine that 98% of the Vatican is homosexual. 98%. And I did a page and a newsletter and a radio broadcast many years ago. I think I put it into the horrific section here. Oh, no, there it is right there in the main section of uh, RCC Exposed. Catholic priests and AIDS. Back when the AIDS crisis was off the chart, it was found that Roman Catholic priests were dying of AIDS 11 times greater than anyone else. Now, if you've done any research on how they found typhoid Mary, you'll know what's actually being said here. Wherever the disease is concentrated is where the disease began. The, the, the prophet Daniel was 100% correct on this, that these men will not have a desire for women. 
And this is why homosexuality has become normalized in our society today, and it is also why homosexual marriage has become legalized. The Vatican is doing everything they can to make their lifestyle normal for two reasons. Number one, they want to revel in this insanity, just like they did in the days of Noah. And number two, they want to be able to get the lawsuits against them on the pedophilia situation not only lowered in dollar amounts with the payouts, but completely removed so that pedophilia is legalized. And this is one of the reasons for the Man Boy Love Association and that uh, concert they had, uh, or I was showing here years ago, they had a concert in a Catholic church with the Man Boy Love Association, and no one seems to care about this stuff. But then again, this is the end times. This is today's world. And so with that all being said, with what's happening here, the Vatican getting rocked supposedly, no, this is normal. I mean, think about this as well. If you go to this page on my website, let me scroll down a little bit here. Uh, here it is, the RCC Exposed, go down to Horrific and go to the uh, RCC and Sex. I have, uh, you know, linked out a document here, the Didachi documents from the Vatican's website itself, uh, as well as I've got you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of articles in here about Roman Catholic priests still molesting children to this day. But this was a problem that they've had since day one. And what they do is whenever the scandal gets so overwhelmingly out of control that the general population gets wind of it, they come forward, and especially a pope comes forward and says, we're going to do something about this, we're going to stop this. And that calms the people down for at least a few decades. And then it happens again. And then another pope says the same thing, oh, we're going to do something, or we're going to put our foot down. I mean, case in point, how many of us that are in our 50s and 60s have seen the last three popes say the exact same thing? Oh, we're going to put our foot down and stop all this. They never do. They never have any intentions of doing so. And this is why I wrote the newsletter, Rome's Homosexual Agenda. They are not going to stop it. They're going to get it legalized so that it won't be an issue for a man to be alone with a little boy. This is what Rome's all about. This is always what Rome's been about. Even pagan Rome had a problem with homosexuality. So what you're seeing here is normal. What he's doing here is just propaganda to make it look like he is still moral. But do a little research on this man. As a matter of fact, I got a page on the website about him. If you go to the RCC Exposed, go to the Popes of Rome, and then you scroll down to Pope Francis, this man's a Jesuit. And, I, and right there, I take the, that's the red section of the actual Jesuit oath that you can get to right here. You wouldn't believe what he said he will do for his church. And it includes murder and ripping children out of the wombs of living women and taking their infants and slamming their heads against the wall to kill them. This is a holy man, not according to scripture. Thank you for watching. God bless.